so to concretize that some, um, out of Kant came Nazism, communism, other um, mistaken ideas today. So with the Nazis, they believed that you had different races and your race determined how your consciousness was and that determined how you saw and valued and experienced the world. So you impose things on the world. You didn't identify the world. You made identity, and it was a social construct for Kant. Not each individual doing this, but society. That's like, um, and as I say, the Nazis made that a national racist thing. So Nazi science was different than British science. And Nazi science was different than like American science. Um, and they believed the Nazis were superior, and so that's one reason that, uh, you know, the broader context, the theoretical idea as to why Hitler had a tizzy fit when Jesse Owens won, what was it, the 400 meter dash or something like that in the Olympics. Because, oh my gosh, here's this guy who's supposed to be inferior to us, and he's beating these great Aryans. And they're supposed to be physically and mentally superior to everybody. Um, and then Kant informed um, communism because you got the proletariat and the bourgeois. And so they took Kant and made material forces instead of racist national forces like the Nazis. The communists made material forces determine your consciousness and determine how you saw the world. So proletariats and bourgeois were divorced. They, they lived in separate worlds. They could not communicate. All they could do was clash. Um, just as the Nazis thought with everyone else. All they could do was clash. They could not communicate. There was no middle ground. Um, so, you know, for Kant, it's society that determines truth. There is no objective truth. There's just what we see in the world. And our ideas determine reality. And there you can see where Kuhn comes from. Kuhn thought we'd have these scientific revolutions. So people are have these imaginative make-believe beliefs that have nothing to do with the world and for some reason we change our fashion and there's this scientific revolution where out with the old in with the new they have nothing to do with each other that hopefully gives you a better idea of what Kuhn is about where he comes from what he means it is an improper view of human beings biology the functional role of consciousness and the life of a living thing it's got a teleological functional role consciousness does and it denies the integration of mind and experience and sense perception the fact that we get concepts from sense perception and the evidence of the senses and experience um, so he would think that the new ideas replace the old, you know, and that's a mistake because you see, for example, some people say, oh, paradigm shift. Einstein showed Newton wrong, which is a bunch of nonsense. If he showed Newton wrong, then why do we still use Newton in everyday life? Why is it successful in experience and in engineering? Why do we use it to get to the moon? Um, he, Einstein built on it and refined it. He did not contradict it or replace it so Newton is a hundred percent perfectly valid in the context from which he integrated his ideas you have certain concrete things certain causal relationships in that context he is 100 percent correct um, Einstein went down to a subatomic level that Newton did not and did not know about Einstein studied things that went much much faster than Newton did things that went closer to the speed of light. Newton did not do that. He did not have his concepts integrated to such a level. You know, the amazing thing is how what Newton did could be extended to things he did not, like concrete things that he did not use to get his theory. So it could be extended to the subatomic and atomic levels. That's the amazing thing, how 
great and genius his work was. Um, or for another example, so some people think Mendel was shown wrong by some later work. I've even seen that in some biology books. Um, and then they go on and kind of contradict themselves and actually use what Mendel said um, to teach and understand um, genetics. Um, you know, so they're failing to see how one thing builds upon another. So Mendel was not shown wrong, which is ludicrous. What he did was correct. And then we have a broader context to understand and further refine what Mendel did. We can see that there's other factors to consider that he hadn't thought of yet. And it's like, what? Oh my gosh, he hadn't thought of everything. He must be wrong. That is ludicrous. The idea that we must know everything before we know anything is impossible and is itself contradicted by the fact that that person didn't know everything to start with. It's just ludicrous beyond belief. We don't have to know everything to know something. When we know something, we know something. Period. End of story. So Mendel knew something from evidence by generalizing. That is valid. Then we learn more and we can extend and refine the concepts and methods he developed according to the causal factors that we discover outside of the context that he did. Did he know about um, maybe atomic structure or things um, subatomic? No. Does he have to? No. Um, just because you know, if that's the case, then you're wrong and you might as well just give up because things are going to be discovered in the next 50 and 100 years or a thousand that show a broader context for things you were thinking. So that would invalidate all your thinking. That's ludicrous. Clearly, we're successful in the world. We move, we live, we survive, we thrive. I mean, it's obvious that we're doing something right. Um, Kuhn is clearly wrong. You look at these different examples, um, Einstein and Newton, um, Darwin and genetics and Mendel, you know, they show how knowledge is built and extended inductively. You know, some things, yeah, are totally wrong. You got this astrology, it's nonsense, it's thrown out, you know, you learn about astronomy. Or if you look at alchemy versus chemistry, um, alchemy was wrong. So we don't have a paradigm shift. We just show that that's wrong and correct our thinking in the first place. Um, you know, you can't take going from alchemy to chemistry and expand that and generalize that to all knowledge and say every change is like that. That's illogical. That's denying the identity of things. That's failing to look at cause effect relationships. That's failing to see that one thing was built upon another versus ideas were shown to be totally wrong. You know, that's um, in some cases evasion on a massive scale. Um, and besides, there were some things in experience and pre-scientific things people were doing in alchemy that were kept in chemistry. We still knew about certain acids, about certain bases, about certain salts. That did not disappear and all of a sudden reality changes as Kant and Kuhn would have us think. No. Facts were still facts. We live in an objective world, not a socially subjective one, as Kant and Kuhn would um, claim or have us think. There were still certain methods that alchemists discovered or developed that were still used by the chemists, but we developed more, refined our thinking, made it objective and scientific. Um, people like Lavoisier, you know, they came up with a clear language language is important in science and in conceptualizing things so one thing has one name so we can communicate and think and reason about things better it's not really social but it's individual as well um, so you can't look at some place where people had a silly idea before and we finally replaced it with something objective and scientific and claim that every change is like that um, I don't think Kuhn's even really doing that because of his philosophical perspective. He's trying to impose his philosophical perspective on everything and interpret science and history and scientific change like that. 
It's not the case. So remember, science is inductive and integrated. It's about identifying causes and systematizing those in one area of knowledge, one kind of causal thing like biology or physics or chemistry or psychology. Um, Kuhn comes from a philosophical background and perspective that divorces conceptual knowledge from the evidence of the senses in reality. You're in this la-la land, but that platonic view was modified by Kant and therefore by Kuhn to, to, for the this other reality instead of knowledge being about perceiving some form somewhere, knowledge is about social constructs and fashions. So a concept is just a social fashion of how we do things. Um, if someone wants to believe communism is right, well, bam, according to Kuhn and Kant, it is. If someone wants to believe that socialism is right, well, then according to them, it is because the group believes it. Where if you want to believe that robbery is fine and it's moral and ethical, well, according to them, then it is. Or if you want to believe that um, everything in the human body goes in a circle, well then, according to Kant and Kuhn, our social thinking determines reality, therefore it's true. Um, that denies an objective world. That makes the world dependent upon our whims and feelings. We don't even have concepts or principles by which to judge. It's just whatever the heck we want. It's all feelings based. Um, and no wonder, you know, Kantian thought causes so much destruction in history as with the Nazis and the communists and a lot of other things. So that's a better understanding of what Kuhn is about. Um, you know, if you know, if we really think about and study science scientifically, if we look at his philosophical background and see what Kuhn believes himself and what he's saying, um, we understand at the same time what science is about and how Kuhn is wrong. Um, hope that helps. Um, that'll help us clear up our thinking about what science is and do science better. Um, be more effective thinkers and reasoners. Um, keep us from doing things like Ptolemy with just looking for circles and circles upon circles upon circles to try to correct your silly thinking. Um, and Ptolemy had all the evidence and math available, for example, to identify the correct law of refraction, but because of his philosophical framework, he failed. That's why it took Snell. Snell did the same stuff, same experiments, but he had the proper philosophical framework. Or you look at Kepler. Kepler was kind of psychotic. Some things he did was Aristotelian, some things Platonic. Um, and if you look at one side, his kind of Aristotelian, objective, rational side, he did some really good science, but in some other areas, he did some really like wacky things. Um, so again, you know, dig into the issue, think about it yourself, understand it properly, um, and I think you'll see that, you know, Kuhn is not someone we want to say is correct and is not uh, a thinker we want to follow. We want to be more Aristotelian, Galilean, Newtonian, Darwinian, be inductive and integrated. Um, thank you for listening. If you have any comments or questions, just let me know and hope you have a good day.